Hi, Friday the 2nd of August, and we're here to look at the uh, the daily astrology. So that's what we're going to do straight away. I'm just going to um, share the chart with you. Here it is. There we go. Right. Now, as I said yesterday, um, there, is, there is something here worth covering. Um, and it's because it enables us to consider the element of water and, and give us another view, a different view. So this is like looking at the water element through a kaleidoscope, you know, those long things with bits of glass at the end that change shape. And um, if you turn the tube, then you get a different view of the same glass. <laughs> it still looks prettier and different. Um, so that's what I like doing with the elements. I like to do that because then we get we get to understand them better because we see them from all sides and at all angles. Okay, so um, what we've got here is the moon has got to 17 degrees of Cancer. So Cancer is the first water zodiac sign okay so it's the the well it's it's the first initiation into love um so love for the mother um and it's it is an unconditional love but then as we know uh, a mother's love is unconditional um i've often said in the past that the love a mother has for a child is the greatest love in the universe and in some ways this sort of says well what about the love of a father for a child and whilst it could be just as strong i think it is the feminine side of the father that engages in the cancer unconditional loving so i'm not saying a father doesn't love like a mother i'm saying but he uses the feminine or yin aspect of his personality uh and then we can look at um athena here called palace athena a long word but i call her athena um <clears throat> a lot of you will know her as a goddess of ancient greece known for her strategic and strategizing potentials her ability to strategize would be the best way of saying it. So uh, a brilliant artisan, um, but also good at some of the healing arts when healing is an art. Um, so I'm just trying to think of some of the, um, so acupuncture, for instance, um, or the um, back flower remedies, or there is another healing. Um, oh, its name escapes me. I'm useless at this. Um, it's where you take a, a, a tincture, a tiny, tiny amount of something. Um, and uh, by taking that small amount of something, then you're uh, beginning a process whereby the body heals itself. You're all shouting the name out to me now. And I, <laughs> write it in the comments. <laughs> I just, I can't remember it. As soon as I say it, I go, oh yeah. Um, anyway, let's have a little bit more about Athena because her mother was Metis. And the mythology is that Zeus um, wanted to acquire, to appropriate all of the lineage and the wisdom of the matriarchal line. Now, up until then, there had been a great goddess, possibly Nut, the Egyptian goddess, but uh, uh, there are others that whose names are all dotted around the uh, eastern end of the Mediterranean. So the myth is that um, in order to um, become uh, much more than just a goddess or the great goddess, um, in order to become the most important and wise and um generally generally the biggest and the best um he swallowed metis to 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 use all of the female feminine wisdom um for himself metis was already pregnant with athena and she gave birth to athena while she was still in zeus 
And uh, Athena, um, unlike her mother, who was just going to remain in Zeus, um, Athena decided that she was not, and she'd had enough of this. Um, so she uh, gave Zeus a really terrible headache. She hammered away inside his head, gave him such a splitting headache that he took an axe and cleaved his head open and out jumped Athena in full battle gear. And that's important. Um, so she is known for her ability in battle, her strategizing ability. Now in astrology, she has, is a very intelligent symbol, a very intelligent energy. Um, she is called feminine intelligence uh, by Demetra George, who's written a brilliant book on the goddesses, the asteroid goddesses. Um, you can still get it from Amazon. It's really worth reading. Anyway, so um, so Athena comes bursting out in full battle gear and will always be considered to be a patron of battle and strategy and winning. However, for me, it's in astrology, it's more about her intelligence. She is incredibly intelligent. Um, and yeah, you could say feminine intelligence. Uh, but I don't have a problem with that. Um, now, putting her into Scorpio. Um, so Scorpio, great depth, mastery. Um, the mastery of the ancient serpent. Um, you can go back through thousands of years of cultural knowledge about sky and gods and goddesses and energies and it's a, a Scorpio encapsulates so much mystery and so much of the hidden mysteries of life, the DNA, if you like, the genetic code. Uh, it's all everything that's hidden um, and invisible is is down there in those deep waters. So put Athena into those deep waters, and she's having a ball because she's gathering intelligence. She's working with some very superior energies, including magic. Um, and uh, there is a very real magic that Scorpio can lend. Okay, and then we've got, um, on this side, we've got Saturn in Pisces. So uh, I will explain about that in a minute, but I just want to point out the triangle before I stop sharing. So we've got the moon here in Cancer, the first sign, Athena in the second water sign, Scorpio, and then Saturn in the third, the highest water sign, Pisces. And they are forming a triangle around planet Earth. And that is called a grand trine. And one of the features of a grand trine is that it can shut out all the other planets. It can operate all by itself. It can become an entity of great force and power but hidden if it's in water very deep okay now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, stop sharing for a minute um and what i want to do now is consider saturn in pisces because this is the third corner listen to me the third point of the three-pointed triangle that we're looking at now saturn is a really old earth energy and it is feared these days but that's because i think we've become um uh, more likely to um want to control our lives and less likely to want to deal with pain um and um depression um, we we don't want to do this, do we? So what we do is we try to sanitize our lives. We try to make ourselves constantly and always happy. Now, Saturn, going way back, it was known that there had to be the downside of the wheel, that there had to be the hardship. And it was that hardship that homes us and makes us strong. Anyway, so Saturn is now a testing planet and it will remove things that aren't fit for the future 
um, and in doing so, it puts you into hardship, but also puts you in a place where eventually you're going to have to develop, create, build something new out of what you've got left. Okay, so put Saturn in Pisces. It, the effect that it has on a zodiac sign is all to, always to inhibit, to hold back, to cause problems for the way that that zodiac sign operates. Um, and it will remove uh, some of the zodiac signs um, outer energy. So it will, it will make it have a reduced power, let's say. Okay, so Saturn's uh, grinding its way, I suppose would be a good way of putting it, uh, through Pisces. Um, Pisces is the most ancient and the highest water sign. Um, it is the final dissolution. So Pisces knows that everything will now dissipate, dissolve, disappear into a primordial nutritious medium that is capable of spawning or producing the first shoots of a new epoch, a new life, a new world, a new civilization, a genesis. Um, so Pisces is tired, um, extremely wise. Uh, it takes on all of the toxic material um, in our dimension and tries to cleanse it so that it can be reused. Okay, so putting these, oh, so the zodiac signs I don't need to stitch together because I, I think I've kind of done that before and you, you get what water is. Um, but let's look how those planets come together. So we've got the moon bringing things close into our own souls, close into our emotional yin energy, the soul energy. So souls are listening, right? Let's just put that a short form on that one. We've got Athena there at her best, really, in Scorpio, I have to say. Um, and so her intelligence, her mother's intelligence, Metis. It's as if we've got access to all the to all the feminine intelligence throughout all creation, going past and in the future. Um, and then we're put in touch with uh, a symbol that is tough, but pragmatic, patient, stern, austere, definitely removes any comfort, um, but nevertheless has around it at the moment the Pisces energy of, well, you know, it's all going to disappear soon anyway. Any moment now, there'll be a great big wave and the waters will rise, the dissolution will come. And so Pisces just lays back and waits <laughs> for, for this for this last the last of its time on Earth, let's put it like that. Um, okay, so we have there a very wise, a very close, and a very profound um energy which some of us might be able to tap into. Um, and if we do, I think it would render us quite quiet, quite um, sober, quite where I think we would be aware of immensity um, and hold it in awe, um, but also no more than we've ever known before. Um, now, because this is talking, and I'm using the word talking, it's an incorrect word, what else do I say? Um, because, it, because it's talking to the soul, it's not really possible for your brain to analyse this. This is something that your soul has to get, and you will never know what it got. 
but it's filling up with something. It's taking something on board, like a car taking fuel on board or electricity, if it's an electric car. It's taking something on board and we'll sit quietly with that knowledge. Um, I feel the knowledge will come in the next time you need it to. Um, and uh, I think it's a great time to just be and to dwell and to acknowledge that there are greater things in this universe of great power that an immensity that we can be in contact with even if we don't even know what happened <laughs> but we get a sense that something is happening and something has happened and something will happen if that makes any sense at all um okay so um that's talking about the the water um now for the weekend we can well actually the moon comes out of um cancer now of course um and they quite know when uh, it's not tomorrow is it later on i think um next day maybe and then um is in leo and so we're moving in towards the leo new moon uh which um Yes, it's always um, a highly dramatic affair. <laughs> Maybe I'll cover that one next time. Otherwise, we're just put, trying to put too much into a video. Right. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, me rambling on. I, when it comes to water, I do ramble because what I'm doing is I'm, I'm trying to get it all intuitively and then put words to something that is wordless give a, give something of an impression of a, a feeling when it's not even a feeling <laughs> so, so oh ramble on Alison. anyway um i will see you on monday i i can't do videos at the weekend but um because i i have to uh, have family uh, responsibilities however it will be lovely to see you on monday um and i look forward to that and thank you very much for listening this far i really do appreciate it